Devil's Planet is the 22nd episode of the second series of the British sci-fi television series Space, 1999 and the 46th overall episode of the programme. The screenplay was written by Michael Winder, the director was Tom Clegg. The original title of the episode was, "...Devil's Moon". The final shooting script is dated 9 September 1976 and live action filming began on Monday 1 November 1976 lasting through to Thursday 18 November 1976. The episode was first broadcast in the UK on 1 September 1977. Story 2,306 days after leaving Earth orbit, the Moon is passing a solar system containing a pair of potentially habitable planets. John Koenig takes Eagle 1 on a reconnaissance flight with co-pilot Blake Main. A sensor sweep of the larger world reveals a breathable atmosphere, vegetation, a city, but no life signs except a single person. After landing, the two men follow the life reading, which ceases as abruptly as it appeared. They find a freestanding booth surrounded by dozens of corpses. Scanning the bodies suggests a neurological pathogen that the Alphans must be immune to. The investigation is interrupted when a shimmering light emanates from the booth. A man materializes and exits, then keels over and dies. Koenig and Maine depart. Flying over the city, they see corpses lying everywhere. Scans of the other planet reveal identical atmosphere and botanical life. While making a close pass, the eagle blunders into a force field. Koenig manages a quick mayday call to Alpha before they crash land in a forest. They survive but then see a running man being hunted by a group of whip-wielding women. As the man tries to reach a sculptural column, the women corner him just short of his goal. When Koenig and Maine move to assist him, Maine runs into an invisible energy barrier and is vaporized, leaving just a smoldering uniform. Koenig is set upon by one of the women and clubbed unconscious with the hilt of her whip. This planet, Entra, is a prison for political dissidents sent from the other world, Elna. The prison is run entirely by women and the inmates are all male. As the Huntress guards carry Koenig to their headquarters, a trial is underway there in a large hall. A prisoner stands accused of plotting an uprising against the ruling authority. Beside him stands Crail, a senior prisoner, pleading his case to Elysia, mistress governor of this penal colony. But this is simply a kangaroo court, and she declares the accused to be guilty. The proceedings are interrupted by the senior guard, Sayers, who reports on the capture of Koenig. She presents Koenig's stun gun to Elysia, who uses it to stun the defendant. He is then sentenced to the hunt. Crail denounces the hunt as inhuman, as few survive. Elysia decrees that any prisoner offered the chance to outwit the hunters and reach the sanctuary column winning instant parole and a return to Elna will accept the challenge. Elysia goes to observe Koenig's interrogation by her head of security. Using a mind probe, she discovers Koenig knows about the plague on Elna a secret known only to herself and Elysia. Elysia has withheld all knowledge of the disaster from both prisoners and guards in order to maintain the status quo on Entra. She orders the information removed from Koenig's brain, regardless of any brain damage this may cause. She then rejoins Crail to grant an early parole to another inmate. After the transbeamer conveys the man home and to his death, Crail questions why the government has stopped sending new prisoners to Entra. The inmates are also unhappy with the recent rules banning live contact with Elna, but Elysia responds with plausible lies. When he criticizes her cruel policies, a guard lashes him for impertinence. Elysia smirks, stating he is lucky he amuses her. The interrogator informs Elysia the alien anatomy of Koenig's brain is preventing her from erasing their secret. The interrogator discusses the growing unrest among the prisoners and advises telling the truth about the plague. Elysia refuses, knowing the inmates would become ungovernable. The interrogator predicts Koenig will tell them but Elysia is confident no one will believe him. Koenig awakens in a cell with three Entran prisoners. As expected, he soon reveals his knowledge of the mass death on Elna. The convicts wonder if this is the truth or another of Elysia's mind games. Just then, the weekly news from Elna is played over the public address system. 
Fabricated by Elysia, this broadcast is the only mode of information available to the prisoners. As an announcer recounts false news of friends and family, the angry prisoners attack Koenig for lying but he is saved by the guards. Elysia openly ogles Koenig like a male sex object. She invites him to stay with her and experience undreamed of pleasure until she tires of him. After Koenig refuses her crass offer, they are interrupted by the arrival of Eagle 2 in orbit. Koenig is held in a sound-proof force field as Elysia contacts the ship. She attempts to warn them off, but pilots Fraser and Alibay are determined to rescue their Alphan colleagues. To deter them, Elysia lies, saying both men were killed in the crash. Despite the threat of the force field, Fraser declares he will come in shooting, if necessary, in order to recover the bodies. Elysia craftily changes tactics, granting permission to land. She directs Crail to lead a work party to the clearing near the crash site. By the time the Alphans arrive, all they will find is evidence of two deaths. While Koenig's footprints are swept away, another inmate, for Lee, dons Koenig's uniform. He is instructed to leave a trail, walk up to the deactivated energy fence, and strip. For Lee does as he is told, but Elysia reactivates the fence early, vaporizing him so that she can make it appear that Koenig died there. Koenig watches from his cell window as Eagle 2 touches down. Elysia greets the Alphan party and they proceed to the crash site. Elysia feigns sympathy as she relates her version of the tragedy. The two men, having survived the crash, blundered into a boundary fence before help could arrive. Fraser and Alibay are shown the staged footprints and two piles of charred Alphan uniforms. The grieving Alphans then depart, much to Elysia's satisfaction. Koenig is brought to the reception hall where an enticingly gowned Elysia awaits. A hunter at heart, she finds the thrill of seduction in the chase as well as the conquest. In the face of his defiance, she reminds him that his people believe him dead. Remaining alive depends on how much he entertains her. Koenig seems to capitulate, taking her in his arms and kissing her, then sends her tumbling into her personal guards before escaping into the forest outside. Elysia instructs her guards that as Koenig has shown contempt for their culture and authority, he must die slowly when captured. While the guards begin tracking him, Koenig comes across the wreckage of Eagle One and attempts to contact Alpha. Elysia smirks, while no transmission can penetrate the defense shield, it has pinpointed his location. As Elysia and company board the ship, he salvages a homing transmitter and a fire extinguisher before jumping down the command module escape hatch. Three guards soon overtake him, but Koenig incapacitates them with the extinguisher. As he activates the transmitter, Sayers grabs him, boasting their shield is blocking his signal. Koenig escapes her and, with this new information, he changes tactics and heads back to the prison tower. Koenig enters the hall and, before anyone can prevent him, darts into the transbeam booth. Elysia raises a weapon, threatening to disintegrate him. Koenig cagily reminds everyone that if she shoots, she destroys the transbeamer. And their only means of returning home. The interrogator reminds Elysia that, with no hope of parole, the prisoners will revolt. Crail addresses Koenig regarding his claim of a plague-ravaged Elna. Koenig tells them Elysia has known about it all along and has been lying to them all. A verbal battle of wits ensues, with Koenig and Elysia each challenging the other's veracity. Upon engaging the transbeamer, Koenig issues her a final challenge to follow him herself and bring him back alive. On Elna, Koenig activates the homing device, which is received by Eagle 2. On Entra, Elysia faces defeat. The interrogator will no longer support her lies and the guard's loyalty is broken. She transports herself to Elna, emboldened by the fact that she will at least kill Koenig before her own death, but she dies within moments of arriving. Eagle 2 arrives and Koenig is rescued. Topic. Cast Topic. Starring Martin Landau. Commander John Koenig Barbara Bain. Dr. Helena Russell Topic. Also starring Catherine Skell Maya 
Topic featuring Tony Anholt, Tony Verdeshi. Topic guest stars Hildegard Neal, Alicia, Roy Marsden, Crail. Topic also featuring. Dora Riser, The Interrogator, Cassandra Harris, Controller Sayers, Angus McInnes, Jelto, Arthur White, Kanano, Michael Dickinson, Blake Maine, John Hug, Astronaut Bill Fraser, Ali Bay Parsons, Ali Bay, Sam Daster, Dr. Ed Spencer. Topic: Uncredited artists. Jeffrey Greenhill, for Lee. Peter Braham, Garth. Robert Reeves, Peter. Dell Baker, Hunted Prisoner. Alan Harris, Accused Prisoner. Topic: Music. The score was re-edited from Previous Space, 1999 incidental music tracks composed for the second series by Derek Wadsworth and draws primarily from the scores of The Metamorph and The Exiles. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Production notes. With a plot derived from The Most Dangerous Game, set in an alien prison reminiscent of Devil's Island, and showcasing a bevy of catsuited, whip-wielding dominatrices, Devil's Planet is the last of the Koenig double-up scripts. The episode is unique in that it was intentionally crafted to feature Martin Landau alone. Barbara Bain, Catherine Skell and Tony Anholt, though receiving on-screen credit, would appear only in library footage seen during Koenig's Mind Probe. Bain would also be heard narrating Helena's customary status report at the start of the episode. At the time of filming, Bain, Skell, Anholt and Nick Tate were off filming the opposing double-up episode, Dorzak, entitled, Devil's Moon. Until post-production, the story would undergo other adjustments. One, the Alphans were to have received a distress signal from Elna. This was the reason Koenig was flying with a member of the medical rescue team. Two, significant dialogue between Elysia and Crail was cut. It was inferred that Crail had served his sentence, but remained out of a sense of duty to act as defense counsel for the inmates. More dialogue about the rights of the imprisoned was also excised. Three, a sequence in the security ward was removed where, faced with Fraser's threat of attack, the Entrans view Koenig's knowledge of Earth warfare. Library footage would have depicted the history of war from marching Roman legions to the Hiroshima atomic bomb. The supporting cast was to include Bill Fraser, Dr. Ben Vincent and Sandra Bennis. While John Hug would appear as Fraser, Jeffrey Kassoon was no longer available and his role was given to newcomer Sam Daster, playing Dr. Ed Spencer. Son was also replaced, as Xenia Merton was committed to a lead part in the Norwegian film Cosmetikrevolusjonen. She had intended staying long enough to film this episode, excited that her character would leave the confines of Moonbase. However, delays in the space, 1999 shooting schedule further pushed back the starting date and Merton was forced to depart for Norway. The role would be given to American actress Ali Bay Parsons. Her character, also called Ali Bay, is a communications officer and would be given all of the Sandra Bennis scenes and dialogue for the rest of the series. Topic. Novelization. The episode was adapted in the Fifth Year Two Space, 1999 novel The Time Fighters by Michael Butterworth published in 1977. Few changes were made to this narrative when the author chose to blend this story with The Seance Spectre. Koenig and Maine were scouting ahead of the moon after its emergence from a space warp. As the ship went down, they observed Sandor and his mutineers overrunning Command Center. Elysia was portrayed as more psychotically sadistic, wanting to fashion Koenig's skin into a whip after he rejects her. In the reworked Omnibus Space, 
Year 2 – The absence of Helena, Maya, Verdeshi and Carter is rationalized by placing them out of communications range on the Eagle Fleet housing the Alphans while repair crews tend to the damage done to Alpha by the waste pit detonation in the Seance Spectre. <laughs>